I am doing my very first tutorial. It's a mixed media drawing slash painting that I did of the planet Earth. I had a lot of fun while I was working on it. I kind of explored a lot of the different mediums and uh, played around with how to use them. And I'll go in depth and explain to you what I used and why I used it. I hope it's helpful. I know that I had a lot of fun and I hope you have a lot of fun using these techniques in the future. So without any further ado, here is my first tutorial. Okay, so I'm starting off with just a basic line work that I used a 2B pencil on Strathmore Bristol smooth paper. I'm just going in and using this kneaded eraser and I, the thing is I put down the line work but graphite isn't always the best when you're working with a lot of mediums. It doesn't stay put. So I erase it out with this kneaded eraser and I go back in with colored pencil. And the good thing about having colored pencil line work to start off with before you start loading it up with different mediums is that the colored pencil line work will stay put. So in this part of the video, I have my mom's bowl from the kitchen. It happened to be the exact same size as the earth that I was drawing. And so I just used that. You can use any circle shaped object that you have lying around. Um, so anyways, I'm going in and I'm definitely erasing out some of the graphite that I put down, but I'm leaving just enough to where I can see what I drew and then I'm going in with a colored pencil and it this really sets down a nice base. And this is what I do with every drawing that I've ever done. It's You might think it takes up a little bit of time, but having that colored pencil line work when you start is extremely helpful. Next, I'm going in with uh, Prismacolor Premier markers, they're the brush tip ones, and I'm just laying in the water. And this isn't, this doesn't have to be detailed, it doesn't have to be very specific, I'm just kind of blocking it in because the marker will be really good to go around the edges of the continents and little islands and it'll stay put, unlike watercolor where it kind of gets a little bit wishy-washy when you work with little edges like that. So I'm going in with the marker and now I'm going on top with the water, watercolor. The watercolor is really good with setting down a base. The colored pencil goes on top really well, and all you have to do is just block in the colors and the values vaguely. It doesn't have to be super detailed. I've seen a lot of people go pretty detailed before they even put the colored pencil on top, and I'm kind of going halfway there. So it just saves a lot of time. I'm just smoothing everything out, filling in the consonants in the water. It's not detailed at this point, it's just a base. So that way I have a lot to work with when I put the colored pencil on top. It will give me a lot more dimension as well. So for this part, I'm just blocking in the clouds with white watercolor that I had in the little palette that I was using. It's the cheapest watercolor that you can buy. They sell it at every craft store. It, I don't even think it has a brand name. I wasn't going for quality here. Um, it's just something that I use to block in shapes and values and stuff like that. With the water I blended a little bit and now I'm blocking in the clouds. I'm not trying to be very detailed here. I'm just kind of exploring where I want the clouds to go and the different shapes. I will go in and refine all of that and clean it all up. If you get a little too much on there, the good thing about watercolor is you just come back in with some water and a paper towel and you just dab that up and it really works well with this stage. Now that I have my base coat down and everything blocked in, I'm going in with my colored pencil detail. And I'm just starting off with smoothing things out and popping out some highlights. I'm not going too crazy at this stage. I'm just going in with the clouds and I'm getting a little better texture and defining them a little bit more. But I'm not going overboard because it's overwhelming when you start with a base and you immediately jump in and try to make it 100% detailed. You just kind of work your way up and I'm kind of uh, blending things out, adding in the colors that I want. And I start to go in with the continents. And I like to think of the continents and the clouds and stuff like that as I'm working on them. I don't think of them as what they are. I'm trying to think of them as like abstract shapes. Um, I think it's a little overwhelming when you're drawing something like the earth and you're trying to make it 100% accurate. So thinking of it as abstract shapes helps me out a lot. I'm just going in and adding in the little mountains and areas like that, small details, one little thing at a time. After I block in some of the detail with the clouds and the continents, I'm now going in with the water 
And uh, you can tell as the, the water gets more shallow along the coasts, it gets almost to a green. So I'm going in with some teals and some greens and popping in some deep blues where the, the ocean is a little bit deeper. And this gives it a lot more depth. And that's the same with the mountains. When I was working on those, I added in the shadows where you know the valleys are and popped in some highlights to really make it look like some peaks. I'm obviously not too detailed at this point, but I'm really going in and, and defining more things than I did when I was working on the base coat. So when I'm working on this water, I'm also kind of going in and refining the edges and adding more detail to the clouds as well. So I'm kind of doing two things at once. This is why I love doing a watercolor or a marker base before I do my colored pencils because of how well it goes on top of these mediums. I'm not having any problems layering right now because when you use Prismacolor pencils, sometimes layering them within themselves, it gets really built up and you can't really go past a certain point. But when you use markers and watercolor as a base beforehand, you can really build up the values that you want. So I definitely recommend trying that because it's helped me a lot, especially with things as layered as this drawing where there's clouds and continents and water. It's very hard to get all of that with just colored pencil. So now that I have some of my detail, my clouds, my continents, um, everything like that, I blocked in the water, I'm going in with an atmosphere or a little hint of one, just a soft bluish green glow. I'm doing it very lightly and just kind of feathering it out with a white. Um, I use white a lot with this one with the clouds and the atmosphere. So now after most of my colored pencil details are blocked in, I'm going in with gouache and it's just a Winsor & Newton gouache that I use a lot of times for highlights because it's much more opaque than most other mediums that I've used like acrylic or watercolor or anything like that. I really love working with this so I'm going in with my gouache in a small brush and I'm just putting in the the whitest whites and using this is actually kind of a cruddy brush but I love that for something like this because it's kind of the ends are kind of spewed a little bit and I'm using that to create some texture with the clouds as you can see just kind of getting a really dry amount of gouache on there and dry brushing some cloud details on there. After I finish up with the gouache I'm going in now with just a fluorescent yellow gel pen to add the city lights on the dark side of the earth. And for the gel pens, it is, let me see, it is a Tech Writer. It's a very cheap brand of gel pen that I got at like Costco in bulk. There's like a hundred of them, but they work really well. It doesn't matter the quality of your gel pen when you're doing this kind of stuff. It's just lays really well on top of the colored pencil and the watercolor that I've put down. And there's not much work to this. I'm just kind of stippling in some city lights and uh, defining the edges of the coast there. After I put in the city lights with the gel pen, that's pretty much the last step. Um, the only thing I did between that and the final picture is noodle around a little bit more on the details, smooth out the clouds a little bit more, and definitely get that atmosphere and the edge of the, the globe a little bit more symmetrical. But um, I hope that was helpful, and I plan on making a lot more of these, and they will get better with time. But if you have any additional questions about the drawing or any of the products that I use, please comment them below, and I will try my best to answer all of them. So there is my earth drawing and the end of my tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.